Hey guys, what is up? I hope you all have been having a great week. Super excited to be back with episode 15, part one of my golf vlog series. This time at the famous Firestone Country Club South Coast. If you guys haven't already, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. Also, as I said in a few videos ago, once I hit 30,000 subscribers, I'll do an 18 hole 30,000 subscriber special at a really prestigious course as a way to thank you guys for making the decision to subscribe and continue to watch my content. It really does mean a lot. This course was the site of the WGC Bridgestone Invitational, one of the premier tournaments on the PGA Tour, and it was definitely a good test for me stretching out to 7,400 yards at a par 70. And yes, I did tip it all the way out to that yardage. In fact, you'll notice some of the holes I play, they don't even have tee markers, because obviously when there's no tournament play going on, members are going to want it to be a little further up, even on the tips. But I made sure to hunt down the longest tee box I could find and play it from the farthest back I could to stretch it all the way out because I thought it would be a great challenge. And I have to give Firestone a huge, huge thank you for having me out. This course was in absolutely immaculate condition, and I know that gets thrown around from time to time, but all I saw was just green, just lush green everywhere. And it was really amazing. It was just an incredible course to play. And if you missed putts, it was your fault because those putts were rolling very true. The greens were pretty quick, and it was just a joy to play the course. And I will definitely be back to play the north course as well because it was just a ton of fun. And it was really nice to be able to let it rip on some of these holes because I've been playing a lot of shorter courses, so kind of felt a little more restricted at times, but I was really able to rip it pretty good a lot on this course. So you can see I'm in a bit of trouble here. Check out this rope hook. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I wish I would have got a little more – put put a little more club on it because I actually would have ran out to the the uh, green. I wasn't expecting to actually hook it enough to get it all the way back in line with the pin, so I took less club. But any any event, I've got about 35, 40 yards hitting my third shot up onto the screen. I actually, first time playing this, thought this was a par four for some reason, so I felt like I, I thought I was trying to get him down for par because I knew there were a lot of long par four. So these kind of, this was a really short par five, so they kind of ran together pretty quick close so it's tough to really differentiate but I have about a 12 15 foot up for birdie and again I really felt very confident over the ball especially with the putter just because of how true these greens were rolling and pulled it a bit but it happens from time to time especially when you're a long driver and not a PGA Tour pro <laughs> and now in a hole three still even par 442 yards and just gonna take a two iron and blast it up the center and sound up So this was pretty much a perfect shot. Nice little club twirl. 273 yards of carry. Got a little gas on the fairway as well. And pretty much perfect spot here to attack this hole. It was a little windy, but as the round went on, the wind really did subside. But I was really happy with how well I was able to handle the wind. And yeah, you guys can see, I mean, there's it looks like a perfectly manicured lawn, this fairway. So I it was really easy to clip it off the grass. and. The big thing I had to really work on was managing my spin. And you'll see see the spin right there. And this landed like six or seven feet from the hole. And you can see I'm trying to get the ball to stop. And hand signals don't work, by the way. At least they don't work for me. You can see where it landed there. It literally landed about four feet away. And it spun back may, maybe like 25, 20 feet. Probably would have been a better idea to take a 50 degree instead of a 54 degree and knock it down a bit. But... Still have a pretty makeable putt here for birdie. And pretty good line, just snaked by a little bit. But another pretty ho-hum par here. But given how hard this course is, for those of you wondering, the rating on this course is a 76 flat. Anytime you have a course where the rating is six shots higher than the par, you know you got a monster on your hands. So now 471 yards and I'm going to let it rip again. Pulled this one a bit up into the trees. I was getting pretty fortunate a lot of the times because I seemed to have openings even when I hit into the tree lines. Like here, I hit it actually far enough left where I had an opening back into the green. So I guess the only time I really got burned on that was hole two where I had to play a bit of a rope hook to get it back in play. So I think I have 139 yards left here, the 54-degree wedge. Once again, trying to bring it in a bit high because these greens do from time to time run a bit firm 
and you'll see here it wasn't a very good decision with this shot because it looked okay at first, but then the wind started grabbing it and pulled it left. I landed pin high, but took a pretty hard kick to the left, and yeah, I had a little bit of work left to do for my up and down. So this was a lot harder of a shot than I think the camera makes it look. I think a lot of the shots, when you're under the pin, ball tends to run more than you want it to. And another thing that really was tough of this course, the rough was just thick and lush, and you really could not get spin. So that was a really tough part on this course, battling the rough all day long to not trying to save my par. And it was a little weak on it. So first drop shot of the day, unfortunately, on hole four. And again, I know I'm going to drop shots in this course. I mean, th this course is an absolute beast. I'll never forget watching Tiger Woods. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was like 20, I don't remember. It was like early two t 2010s. He was like on 59 watch for a while on this course, and I don't know how in the heck he was on 59 watch. This is a brutally hard course. So we're trying to bring the bring my shot in here. Just got it just over the bunker. We hit it pretty crisply. And you, you'll see how it kind of bounced pretty hard and kind of banked to the left and spun back a bit. But I, hey, from 200 yards out, I'll take that all day long. And I have a putt straight up the hill and have a really good chance to get this shot back. So just trying to be aggressive. And I, as I said earlier, these greens were rolling so true that I really felt comfortable putting on these greens. And, yep, left it short. And there's me grimacing at the camera at you guys because I know I'm going to hear it from you all in the comments on that one. <laughs> but... Honestly, if it's a 200-yard par 3 and I walk away the 3, I'm not too upset. It's so not hole 6, still 1 over, 469 yards, dead into the face here on the, with the wind. And you can actually see the camera shaking a bit, it was so windy. But really great drive here. Spun a little bit too much, but again, dead center of the fairway, and that's priority number one, especially on this course. And again, man, that is just such a perfect lie. And so you can see here, I am actually have a very similar yardage. I had 135, 140 yards a lot on this course. And you can see I'm actually hitting a pitching wedge instead of a 54 degree. And I got a much better result. Flew it about maybe 15, 20 feet past the hole. And you can actually see I'm trying to get it to come back a little bit. But stay a little bit long. But it wasn't too bad of a shot. And again, have another really good opportunity for birdie to get that shot back. And this putt looked so quick from my, my point of view. It really did. So I was, these greens were such that I felt comfortable and confident on them, but I also felt like there really wasn't much standing between me and letting a putt get away from me if I wasn't paying attention. I, I really felt like there wasn't too much in the way of me hitting a putt six or seven feet by if I didn't, pay, if I didn't watch out. So another par and on a hole seven, 226 yards. I have an eight iron here. And I know one of the things you do not want to do on this hole is hit it long, especially when the pin's in the back like it was here. So I underclubbed a little bit. And you'll see it, it was pretty short, but I, I, I just did not want to go longer this hole where that pin location was. But I did want to hit a little bit further. Probably should have hit a 7 iron. And yeah, it, it's hard to see from this camera angle, but the pin was on the back edge of the screen, and yeah, you're not going to stop it if you go longer this hole. But I had a very, very, very easy 50-footer, about as easy easy of a 50-footer as you could have. And so I hit that to about three feet and uh, clean this one up for my three. So another really good par, and that's what I was really happy with, how I played the par threes here. I've always struggled, and you guys know this, I've always struggled with the par threes. But I don't know, I just really felt comfortable on them today for whatever reason. So now I'm all eight and started this in a good spot but it's kind of drawn a little bit more than i'd like put some pretty good gas on it 210 miles an hour but it was a bit into the wind and got a little lucky here i still had to hit less club than i wanted because there was some overhanging branches there just out of the camera view from that tree on the left that i had to contend with so pin was in the front and it slopes away from you in this hole so i would have liked to have hit a 60 degree wedge or and uh, give it a little bit more of a higher launch angle but had to knock it under some trees and hit a pretty good shot but as you can see I was trying to communicate with the golf ball to stop <laughs> and so it ran by about maybe 25 feet but since it was a front to back sloping green I had a really really 
good go at this putt. It was uphill, and I felt pretty good over the putt. So I was just going to make a good roll, see what happens, and boom, knocked it in. So that was that felt pretty good. So I got back to even par, and I'm thrilled with this start. I mean, through eight to be even par with the wind and all this is fantastic. And now I'm at a 494-yard par four. I told you guys I was playing this all the way back. Sound up. So this was an absolute peach of a drive. 142 club speed, 210 ball speed. Carried out there really nicely. And this was center cut of the fairway. And I think I had a nice little gallery actually watching me on the, I don't know if you can see them from there, but I had probably about 20, 30 people on, that, on the pro shop back there watching. I think some people, word got out that I was playing and they could recognize me. So they were kind of taking it in a little bit. So just trying to put a nice little wedge in here. Again, really felt comfortable with my wedges all day long. And pretty good control here, just a little bit right of the pin. Took one big bounce and just stopped dead in 493-yard par four. I'm, I'll take uh, what I had left here. And I apologize for the camera angle. I think I accidentally nudged the camera when I was walking up to hit this putt. So this is to get in at a one under 34. But unfortunately, I pulled it a little bit. So I'll tap that in to shoot even par 35 in the front. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time for part two, the back nine. Next.